The Guardian Times, hosting of Continental Food Trade Area Secretariat, uh, where Ready President uh, make, uh, makes a case for Ghana, and uh, farmer jailed for 12 months for stealing uh, fowls. The finder says that MPS deal may be reviewed, read for review demanded by worker unions. That's on the uh, page four of the newspaper, and then develop strategic plan for special prosecutor's office. That's the CDD uh, talking there. Uh, the Daily Graphic says, yes, that story, review all petroleum agreements, ASAP, uh, is a charging government, and ignore purported list from special prosecutor. These are uh, stories on the uh, Daily Graphic. And then BNFT says, 13 petroleum blocks still remain dormant, ASAP. Uh, we will achieve 8% year end year inflation target. The finance minister uh, talking there. Those are some of the news papers I have this morning. My guest will do the talking. The deputy minister of information, <coughs> Pius Enam Hajide, is here. Good morning. And I hope you're doing great. Yeah, fine, thank Thanks you. for your time with us. An MP for Tamale North, a member of the NDC, Honorable Elijah Sini, is also here. Good morning, too. Good morning. Hope you're doing great. Oh, mm. Thanks for joining us. Certainly, let's start with this conversation from the Office of the Special Prosecutor. The story captured in page 16 uh, says that the board, the board chairperson of the office, uh, has asked the public to disregard the list of cases making the rounds, said to be cases that the office is working on. She said a list, if authentic, should rather be a cause for concern, as it would mean that there was a mole in the office leaking information not meant for the public. Um, this is the list supposed to have come up from uh, the office. Um, according to uh, her, uh, she charged Ghanaian to test the supposed list against the law laid out in Section 3 of the Office of the Special Prosecutor Act 2018, Act 959. She said that the chair of the board, she did not know about current investigations at the office, neither did any board member. Now, she continues that if we knew, that would amount to interference in the operations of the office. Uh, she stressed the fact that the board was not involved in the day-to-day -day administration of the office, as that would amount to undermining independence of the office. I know the expectation of Ghanaians is to see some prosecutions. However, we must make sure that the office works procedurally. That's what she uh, said yesterday when uh, the office, there was a program by CDD on one year of, of the office of the special Prosecutor. Uh, Honorable uh, Powers, uh, le let me start the conversation here. <coughs> is, it, is it simply a fact that we're putting too much pressure on the, the SP to, to come out, or perhaps we, 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 we have triggered uh, this kind of feeling in Ghanaians about the need to get people quickly prosecuted by the various corruption allegations that we have thrown out. Well, thank you very much. Mm. Uh, good morning to you, Bright, mm. and to my colleague and to the cherished viewers of uh, TV3 FM. Uh, TV3, sorry. M3 FM, you can M3 FM, yes. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Over the last couple of days, we have been talking about uh, TVs and FM. FM so stations, okay. Understand. I, I think that there's, a, there's that possibility, what you speak of. Uh, and without a doubt, uh, there's a certain expectation uh, from the people of Ghana mm. uh, about what must be investigations and prosecutions and possible convictions. Uh, maybe because uh, they themselves have been uh, living witnesses to some of the uh, very reprehensible and questionable uh, acts uh, that have permeated our uh, contemporary history and so there is some apprehension. Uh, I also must add that that appetite uh, for prosecution, uh, no matter how justified it may be, mm. uh, has to be regulated within the context of the law. I mean this is not a banana republic. This is a republic that is governed by rules and regulations, and uh, we also must manage that appetite uh, to punish 
especially people who were or uh, are in public space. Unfortunately, it is uh, some of those of us who are in public office who engage in that uh, unhealthy habit of cultivating that appetite, mm. uh, if you may, for political expediency. Uh, but uh, it goes round, and then uh, you notice that at the end of the day, some of them may just be conjecture, some of them may just be speculation, and so on and so forth. And so it is important that we begin to shape the narrative. And uh, I've heard people saying that, well, uh, as it was in the past, so must it be now and forever. But I hold a different view that we have to make progress as a country. Mm. And uh, even in the discussion of corruption, we have to set out the criteria quite clearly. And I believe that there's a world of difference between uh, corruption, which is uh, to use public office for personal benefits, and if you may, uh, immoral public life, uh, and maybe sometimes even genuine mistakes in public service. And we have to draw the line. Uh, but in this country, everything and anything that does not meet uh, specific uh, expectations of people would be characterized as corruption. That can be problematic. All of this mm. go to feed the perception that you so rightly may have. There is, that there not is, working. There is uh, undue pressure on the uh, OSP and, and that the OSP uh, has to begin to already haul people before the courts and already have to begin to secure some convictions and so on and so forth. What I know, and it is true, is that the wheels of justice grind, but they do so gradually, and but they definitely will grind. And so it's important that we are all patient with the office of the of the special prosecutor. I think that the establishment of that office has been without doubt one of the phenomenal actions taken by any government and any president to uh, fight corruption from the front. And, and it has been clothed with enormous powers. And you just read that even the board uh, of the OSP says that a mere knowledge, an attempt to know what may be happening at the uh, OSP's uh, secretary, day-to-day -day administration, may amount to interference. And, and so even if the board carries that, that position, then we must understand that it is important that we give them space, they do their work. About the least, uh, I am not too sure, because in one breath you have been told that ignore it, in another breath people believe that there's some uh, truth, uh, in, truth what in it. I, I really, I think there is much I do about nothing. Uh, whatever it is, like I said, uh, the wheels of justice will grind and they will come to a halt. Again, we must also be clear that when allegations are made, they remain allegations until evidence is actually adduced and a prosecution and a conviction is uh, secured from the court. It is uh, not right to just, uh, just at the site of an allegation. And this one, I believe that, especially for those of us who remain in public, uh, public service, mm. we must at least be unanimous about this. We must be, agreed we must be agreed about this. Because if we do not, there's the tendency for bastardization of public life, which will have dire uh, consequences even on national security. Because at the end of the day, it is the members of parliament who go to uh, make the laws. It is members of the executive who have to implement the law. If there is a breach of trust in, 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 in the legislative, whatever law they pass, the people of Ghana will not even take it serious. Mm. If there is a breach of trust res with respect to the executive, implementation of the law, which was not even accepted by the generality of the people, implementation of that law becomes very difficult, if not impossible. And so we have to uh, draw the line at a point uh, between our uh, desire, sometimes wanting to get into the executive arm of government and therefore say or do anything just to give the dog a bad name and hang it. When you do that, 
you would have created an, a, a, a situation uh, which may uh, come back in, in the future uh, to uh, worry you and so on and so forth. So let us give the the office of the special protect, protect uh, special prosecutor mm. uh, all uh, of the support that uh, they need. The state is active to and responsive to its responsibility of uh, uh, supporting the office has provided huge uh, budgetary allocations if you check the budget uh, that was just presented uh, my recollection is right about 180 million cities have been allocated to that office that's enormous uh, resources put at the disposal of the osp but can I you say he has gotten that I think, money well i know that i mean these are not money these are monies that you 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 you, you have to you have to request and get, get it. and so it's not like the 180 million is dumped uh, on your laps mm. uh, immediately the budget is read what what it means is that it's available for you to assess as to whether he has uh, access to the not it or help. not i cannot at this material moment uh, <coughs> say but i do know that the commitment of this government uh, to fighting corruption uh, is manifest not only in the establishment of the osp mm. but even in the funding of the other anti-graft agencies I mean, there has been a monumental uh, increase in the funding of the anti-graft agencies. Passage of new laws uh, to clamp down on corruption have happened. And, and my, my brother here uh, is in parliament and he will confirm that, and so on and so forth. And so uh, I believe that we are leading from the front and that, mm. uh, inshallah, with the support of the people let, of Ghana, let me, let me quickly deal with this kanka. Pick your brains on something. I mean, before I get to an about Suini, would anybody be asking legitimate questions if the person suggests, for instance, that perhaps the, the special prosecutor isn't getting the evidence needed in all these cases of corruption allegations that we, we, we threw around? That is why we have not seen any real action. Would anybody be arguing right? Well, again, I'm not privy to the nitty gritties of what is happening at the OSP. I cannot be. Mm. I, I do not have that power. And and so I am I am restrained. But I can understand mm. uh, because my knowledge uh, is that increasingly people who uh, have committed and even may still commit crime, especially white color crimes, have become quite sophisticated. And uh, you may suspect uh, that some corruption has occurred, some crime has occurred, and you may feel very, very strongly about it. Uh, but that's one argument. The other argument of finding the evidence that can, and in, in a court, in a criminal matter, it is uh, beyond any reasonable doubt. And uh, the, the, the he who averse must adduce the evidence, you must prove. And people have become a little more sophisticated, uh, they have become very more very very intelligent and uh, they it can become difficult right. to find the evidence especially in the matters of white color crimes and so on and so forth so that there is that possibility and that is why okay. we need a certain amount of patience as well uh, as the osp works to uh, unlock some of the very very tedious combinations of the lock that has been put and so Yes, there is that possibility, but I cannot confirm or deny because I'm I do not have the details. Mm, I'm grateful. Uh, Alaji, uh, 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 the, the, the question remains. Some have even suggested that for them, the SP should, should pluck the low-hanging fruit if the various cases of allegations that were thrown about, uh, he's not getting a, a evidence to go to court. So, for instance, uh, a, a commentator yesterday said that, why, for instance, we're told when government was changing hands during the transition that several vehicles were missing from the presidency. There were reports of charges numbers being ch ch uh, changed. And, and he said these are, I mean, information that can easily be gotten. Now, if it is difficult for the special prosecutor to get evidence from some of these high corruption allegations, what about the low-hanging fruits? Well, um, right, once again, thank you for the opportunity to be here. And mm. let me say good morning to our uh, viewers, especially the very people of Tamale 
uh, North constituency. And also to uh, say that you may have noticed me uh, smile when my brother uh, preached about how we shouldn't uh, be in a haste to condemn people and tack them corrupt, you know, until uh, they are, you know, uh, taken through the full process mm. of the law, i.e. Uh, prosecuted and convicted. And I thought that was quite edifying and especially coming from, from him. So it got me smiling mm. and, and I just wish that we could all remain that consistent, you know, uh, not only uh, uh, do it like I have repeatedly said, mm. uh, to confirm my position that uh, the truth you deny in opposition political power will force you to confess to it. Yeah, so when you get power, you begin to confess that there are some truths that you denied in opposition, that people are not merely corrupt because you suspect mm. corruption has taken place. And I know, you know, uh, coming from him, it was quite edifying, and that is what got me smiling. But that's by the way. The issue of corruption it's something as a people that we must all, at all times, you know, do everything in our capacities to, you know, uh, fight against. I recall, uh, uh, you know, former President Mahama referring to corruption as mass murder. And honestly, I've not heard a better definition or of the effects of corruption. Because you see, its impact and its effects is that widespread and that dangerous that indeed it operates like a mass murderer. Because you see, when corruption takes place in say, the medical field, fake medicines are administered mm. and people die. Their diseases get complicated and people die. When you have corruption in education, you produce corrupt society. People who are half-baked, people whose commitment to the national development is nothing to write home about, and so the future of a country is at stake. When you have corruption in the road sector, you have roads that are done in such a way that Accidents are rampant on those roads. They either do not last or they are done in such a way that motor users or vehicle users, you know, uh, will have accidents. And, and that is the nature of the impact of corruption. And that is why, as a people, we must, at all times, within our capacities, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, be seen to be fighting and dealing with it. And as a country, we haven't been doing very well when it comes to the fight against corruption. If you look at the various rankings, uh, especially by the Transparency International, you notice that we are actually becoming worse. I mean, we averaged around 64 uh, uh, on the ranking, mm. I think uh, from 1998 till about 2017, when we recorded uh, the all-time high mark of 81 you know very very unacceptable and then in 2018 we came down but slightly to about 78 and that 78 is still the worst performance ever in our history since we you know were included in the rankings and so any move that is intended to fight corruption should be supported by all and it should or it will gain that you know total support when it is not seen as you know a political tool or rhetoric. When you uh, set out to fight corruption, uh, I mean people are reasonable beings. Mm. They know when the intention is good. They also know when the intention is just mere rhetoric. 
or when the intention is just to witch hunt. And once that perception is created, maybe through your own actions and inactions, in whatever vehicle you want to use to fight that corruption, you are going to have some of the problems that I think the Office of the Special Prosecutor is having. Because you see, pride. In the establishment of the Office of Special Prosecutor, I was one person who was indifferent in the beginning because I was not very convinced if it was going to uh, be phenomenal like my brother suggested in his submission in the fight against corruption. But I also was mindful of the fact that other countries in the world have used that system and have recorded some positive results. Just like other countries too, through that system and through research is showing that the creation of that office has not really added much. So I was quite indifferent at the beginning and open-minded and trying to see if the creation was going to uh, be impactful how did we as a country have to go about its creation so that we can get the needed impact? But from day one, I, 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 with the open mind, came to the conclusion that this was not really intended to reduce corruption and to tackle it in a phenomenal manner, but it was just an addition to the already existing bureaucracies that we have in the fight against corruption. I did not see how beyond what was written in the text, it was going to operate efficiently and effectively, you know, uh, 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 from Shraj, from Yoko, and from the office of the Attorney General and Minister of Justice. I mean, like I said, beyond what was written in the text and what was suggested, mm -hmm. if you were listening to people and if you were monitoring the post train, I didn't get the sense that this was intended to do something phenomenal that will be impactful, you know, uh, on the, or that, would, that will impact positively on the fight against corruption. And if you go back to some of the positions that I took when we were even vetting the, of the, 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 the special the prosecutor. Right. You will notice some of these concerns that I raised. And even in my objection, my initial objection to his approval, I stated clearly when I, you know, based on consultations and, you know, presentations made, changed my decision, that I was hoping that he would prove me wrong. Because I was not confident that he was going to do anything phenomenal because of the nature of the setup and the posturing of those who were setting it up and his own posturing. And so I feel honestly vindicated by some of the things that are happening, the disappointment, for example, because at the time there was that deliberate overhyping of what the office was coming to do, creating uh, a, a certain level of expectation that for me was dangerous for even the operations of the office. And so today, when you have those expectations leading to the questions that are being asked, you should only blame yourself, that is those who set it up, because of the kind of perception and expectation that you created about that office. It and not, even- It's not about the slow processes. It, of trying to get prosecution? You see, it, it, then those who were setting it up should have been mindful of the fact that these things will have to go through a process. But like I'm saying, right. the posturing, uh, I'll come to you. The posturing, the body language, the, the, the utterances mm. of people who were in office was as if to say that once, first of all, the bill was passed, Wyoming was going to have to go get out of town. You saw those things. You heard those things. And even named some people who had to pack bag and baggage and run. But you see, we are in a democracy. Things don't happen like that. 
And in fact, the other time on another network, and this is just by the way, I said that it seems to me that Woyomi is more comfortable under the NPP than he was under the previous government, even though the NPP promised to make life hell for him. It is because, you see, again, when you refuse the truth in opposition, it confronts you in government that there are processes that you always have to follow in dealing with some of these matters. So for me, right, I am not surprised that the Office of the Special Prosecutor is finding it difficult to uh, convince a lot of people that it is really, you know, doing something uh, great when it comes to contributing to the fight against corruption. But what also I find inconsistent is what is reported in the Daily Graphic today and what I heard in bits and parts the on list. another radio station mm -hmm. when the board chairman was or, or chairperson was hosted, mm -hmm. I, 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 I got a different impression listening to her on radio. And I'm getting a different impression, you know, following the report of the Daily Graphic, which was supposed to have been uh, 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 called from a function that she addressed. Because clearly, when I listened to her, I got the impression that, yes, some work was going on, and then some confirmations about some of the things that are even on the list doing the rounds. So to then again say, ignore the, 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 list. the list, and suggest that she was not even briefed, when I think on the interview I heard her say they have been briefed, I, I, I get confused as to whether it is the the, the, the reporter who is uh, 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 misreporting, or maybe after that interview was aired, mm. she decided to you know amend the, what, what was said, said you know on 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 radio at this particular well, other papers so also I'm reporting bit, same that uh, I'm a bit we should ignore the list. Uh, I'm a bit I'm a bit confused, mm. but you see when you even look at the okay, list that is going around, yes, just right. wrapping up on that. You look at the list that is going around. It is so ridiculous that I can understand why maybe we are told to ignore the list. So, 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 so ridiculous. I mean, you look at some of the cases and you're like, really? Is this what our tax is being used to, you know, uh, 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 do? Mm. Wild goose chase? I mean, for example, you find two mansions, two mansions per chase, and then suspect, they name a person, and then uh, status of the case. They tell you they are still waiting for former President Rawlings to confirm the name of the person they have already listed as a suspect. So, I mean, like, so former pre if former President Rawlings doesn't tell, meanwhile, you have a name. You have, you say two okay. mansions purchased $13 million. Then you have a name. You don't, I, I, the name as a suspect. Then status of the case, we are waiting for former President Rawlings to confirm the name of the suspect. Then we start investigations. Ridiculous. And I, I, I mean, I'm like, okay, God, I hope that uh, our uncle has not found himself in, you know, <laughs> okay. a circus. Let, let me get that in. will eventually you, just uh, finish the little credibility that he has. Okay, left. I'm grateful. Uh, well, Paz, uh, you, you wanted to is, do a quick reaction. No, it's there. clear that my brother would not take the admonition mm. that we need to make progress. And uh, he wants to, as it were, uh, characterize what may have happened in the past as the ills and revisit it on the present. And I, I think that... He says that but perhaps the, the setting up of the office no, that's not, I'm is not matching with... He's saying what that I preached and I had a certain... Uh, renewal of attitude. Okay. And well, he, he suggested find, that you, you now agree find, that and people find, must be allowed to defend And I find himself. that he ended up uh, repeating what, in his view, mm. was what may have happened in the past, which is bad, but he wants to do it today. Okay. Uh, and I'll, I'll get to that mm. in, in, in a bit. We speak about the attitude of those in government who led to the, the creation of an impression and I'm not sure how you are able to establish that, that the people of Ghana themselves, in my view, mm. came to a conclusion, maybe because of the things that they thought they knew, maybe because of the things that in the past everybody said. You're talking and, about the expectations the of expectations. people about the office. Okay, but there was nothing either in the law mm. or said by any person in authority that my brother can point to that, for instance, justifies the claim that people said 
or people led people to believe that uh, uh, people were going to pack bag and baggage and leave, and that uh, Woyome was going to uh, be put in jail. But you see, yeah, I agree with you. But if he says that, if that is you, his view, if you no, it, that could have been his view. Okay, but he right. created the impression that it was those of us who were in in government who should be blamed for it. I go on social media today and see a lot of things. Okay, mm -hmm. but to take uh, uh, social media. Uh, impressions and so on and so forth and to characterize it to mean the position of the NDC or the agenda that, that the NDC is pushing can become quite problematic and I wanted to point that out and again so it cannot be true what was the agenda of government to be. in setting up the, the SP of I said it already I don't want uh -huh. it is so right. it is too right you see, no, let me just share uh, this with you, you. you let me just share this I don't you, want, you want us to belabor the point I just want to refer to something the president and the voice clip is here says office of special prosecutor is to put fear of God in public offices. Yeah, but but okay. I have the fear and, of God. And that is just one of the ways uh, no. that that, no, that, no, no, that no, impression no, no. was created. No, no. Okay. That this was going no, to be but phenomenal. That, but, but it and is. he even in his submissions has said that, oh, the office of the is phenom no. what phenomenal thing it, have they done? And what phenomenal thing are they going to do that you know, for example, Yoko and Shraj and others haven't done before. Even okay. Shraj has investigated sitting presidents. Okay. Allah Allah pass. Okay. Well, these are the so members of parliament. Are what, these are the, the members things. of yeah. parliament who have passed the OSP law, mm. and I've read that law, and I've read the charge law, and I see a world of difference. I see powers that the special prosecutor has that Shrag doesn't have. Okay. There cannot be any doubt about so that. That's a, that's and I'm saying that this is, this is, this is, and I'm saying and that. I agree this to him by saying that beyond the text, beyond what was written in the text, yeah, but the text is to be implemented not by you or that, me. I didn't see anything and that the money is, showed that no, there will no, be a, no, but a, a phenomenal see, implementation no, 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 of what but, was but, in the text. Okay, but what we, what, what was important was the text. <laughs> As for your pessimism, yes, I can understand. Maybe you know Martin, uh, Mr. Martin Amidu better than I. You had your personal I issues with really uh, 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 Mr. Yeah. Amidu. You were strongly objected to his nomination as a uh, special prosecutor and so on and so forth. So I do not, I cannot speak to what informs your pessimism. But I'm saying that it is the text of the law that, is ma that matters. It is the powers that the man has that matters. Again, to be fair to the man, this is new. We are all in new territory. And uh, he is not like a magician who, at the at the one, uh, I mean, the flip of a finger can can do some of these things. I believe that with time, mm. these things will shape up better. How long? How old is the is the office of what the time special? Are you at? But what, I'm saying that you what see time are you exactly the attitude that puts pressure. Mm. Look, investigations have gone on all over the world for years. Okay. So, so this question of what time are you looking at and, and uh, uh, will it be at the end of this year and the question asking, uh, people asking questions, uh, Mr. Amidu, let's see what work you are doing. In my honest view, my mm. personal honest view, I believe that they tend to put pressure on the office of the, uh, of the special prosecutor. But again, on the Woyome case, my brother said that he said somewhere on radio that Woyome may be more comfortable today. That can never be true uh, because you see, this is a legacy problem was inherited. Mm -hmm. There was a judgment of a court that was, uh, 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 I mean, deliberately overlooked. Monies had been given to the man. Where we are now is to take back the money. Oh, so that's the new work. But the easier work, which my brother, unfortunately, we failed on in the past, was giving him the money in the first place, especially when there was a ruling that that should not have happened. But we still went ahead and gave them that money. Somebody who received money in the past can definitely not be more comfortable now when we are trying to take the money from him than when he was receiving money. That I don't see how uh, 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 that logic okay. can, can And that's can, just can what I react to without yeah. belaboring the point. I don't want us to discuss it. Yeah, because let's move. I used it just the as, case is as, to score some yes. points and no, I had to just deal as with Just as an example mm. of how sometimes you can create a certain perception in opposition and that perception comes to harm to you. When no, I can are, agree. When but the people of Ghana were worried. I can agree. But the people of Ghana were worried about Boyome. So please, we didn't have to do anything please, about please, it. They were genuinely please, worried. Please, please, worried. I don't know you. Pass, you you, you know, but you I, just, I wanted to just use it. So the point, the point, the point here is that even in speaking about it, even though it's not the topic, it's important that we are very truthful. First of all, there was no ruling. 
at the time that Woyomi was paid, yeah. that said he shouldn't be paid. No, it's, I'm there was no, yeah, the so, yeah. is, please. So, there was so no the ruling, there was no ruling. The, you, at the time that yeah. he was paid. In fact, there was rather a ruling that, that asked him that X. he should be paid. X, and you paid please, him X plus please, Y. Please, 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 please. There was no ruling that mm. said he shouldn't be paid. Mm. Then secondly, <laughs> secondly, Sorry, uh, 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 as for the processes that he says they are going through now, of retrieval, to retrieving the money. the money. Those processes were underway under the NDC, but they said it was slow and they had a way of fast tracking it. Mm. So he shouldn't sit here and create the impression as if they have come and there are now been attempts to retrieve the money. All the processes that they are we undergoing, they are undergoing with Hoyomi now, we and even in court, the court, court, we, we, no, we were actually on that track when they said it was slow and that they had a better way. So I'm saying that those are some of the but impressions you, you create in, in opposition, and when you are in government, it confronts you. My brother should accept that. You and, know, and so okay. that we can move on like he's suggesting. No, no problem. And then okay. we all learn how to deal no with problem. some of these all things. Right. I can, I'm, I'm, I can concede. I can <laughs> concede. But, 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 but is it not curious? Oh, can we not move is it not curious that that same establishment that pays for you, mm. is the same establishment that wants to receive, receive the, retrieve <laughs> the money from? On what basis do you, do, did okay. you then pay him? Let's move on. Uh, whilst we wait for the money to be retrieved, <laughs> let's, let's move on. Let's touch on this story briefly. There's a story here from the minority leader who's suggesting that the sale of the Commander Sugar Factory Wouldn't we do is the um, a, a rape of oil blocks. We'll do it. He explained that the decision to sell the Indian government finance entity defied logic and has potential to damage existing relationship between the two governments. Uh, this is um, a running story. Pius, is, it, is this factory being sold? Is that it? Quickly, we don't want to uh, keep. Uh, uh, well, it is my it is my understanding uh, that due to the poor planning and very problematic uh, execution of the Commander Sugar Factory project, mm. that project has stalled. Uh, we were all hoodwinked uh, and deceived uh, into thinking that uh, this factory was operational. In fact, a huge uh, public fanfare was held to herald the production of the first uh, sugar from that the factory. Test run. You uh, mean the test it run. turned out that uh, that was uh, not sustainable and uh, it was much ado about nothing. There was nothing to celebrate. Mm. And so, again, part of the, the legacy inheritance, and that is what we inherited. We inherited a Commander Sugar Factory that was n very dysfunctional uh, there was no raw material uh, and and so on and so forth. Even before we came in, uh, the government of the day, the NDC government, has started discussions about divesting uh, some shares into, into private hands uh, to bring in private participation and so on and so forth. Uh, I am well aware that uh, the Commander Sugar factory debacle uh, has gone under a first phase of study. Mm. There is a second phase uh, to validate uh, the position of the first study and that very soon government will announce a position. Uh, so it is it not is, for it sale is possible. Now. It is possible. I am not aware that it is up for sale. Okay. I know that uh, one of the options that is being uh, strongly advocated is that we should invite public, uh, private participation into that sector. I know for a fact that it's a position that is being strongly advocated. I'm not too sure if it is uh, up for sale mm -hmm. uh, already, but like I said, this was a position or uh, there was the attempt, even in times past, to introduce a uh, private participation. But without doubt, uh, we have to revisit the Commander Sugar uh, Factory story. Mm -hmm. uh, even the costs, we borrowed $35 million uh, and then at the end of the day, the factory is being valued at some between 12 million or 30 million dollars. And, and so even if you wanted to sell the factory, you are able to sell it uh, at only that price. And this costing were done by independent third parties. And, and how is it that you are able to borrow 35 million and sink all of it mm -hmm. into building a factory? That's which true value is uh, uh, more than half, so or that, that, less than that, half. That 35 million came to the government of Ghana? Oh, absolutely. We borrowed it from, from, okay. from uh, uh, I think, China 
or, or, or so, India. So India. if Dr. Uh, so Gabra says that that money didn't come to Ghana, you would... Uh, uh, well, it came... It, how did he, said, he said it's, it's the Indian government that built the fucking... That that money did not come to Ghana. Well, I thought we borrowed the money. We were going to pay. Well, he said the, the money was built... Uh, the fact no, was but is that not Indian Johan Bright? So it's the, not the, about the what he says. As for people, they the can't... money didn't come people to Ghana. People act in funny ways, you okay. understand. And I was surprised, Mr. Spielgraber, and we, another time we can discuss, I heard some of the comments he made mm. when he attended a, a vigil a couple of days ago. And I, I just opposed that to the comments he made when he was uh, at the National Media Commission, the uh, National Communications Authority. Mm -hmm. And I felt that, no, we must watch these things uh, and not okay. walk into this. Do you think the money but came the to the government of Ghana? I mean, $35 what, million. Dollars. I, I, I mean, you will ask me what account, what bank. I know that the government of Ghana borrowed money. Re received the money. And if you borrow money, you borrow money, you receive it. Okay. And so this new argument that we borrowed the money, but it was still with the Indian people, and they came. So are, are we getting? I mean, the, is that the, even the, so? The two billion uh, dollar hydro money. Are we getting that money as well, a government? That, that's not a loan. We did. We are not borrowing two no, billion. No, but are we getting? No, it? I'm saying that it's not a loan. This one, it was a loan. No, you are so, saying that. So I don't well, see the money that comes. As, it is when you borrow money. When you borrow money. So we are not. When you take a loan. When you take a loan, it comes to you. Mm. That's my uh, fundamental uh, uh, understanding of mm. what a loan is. I cannot borrow money from you and the money is in your pocket and you are spending it and it's my loan and I'm going to pay. Okay. But in, so I don't see the connection between the, the, the two billion because that's not a loan. So mm. there are two different uh, concepts that we, are, we, we will be comparing apples to bananas. But that's my understanding. But I'm okay. saying that wherever the money was, mm. even if it was still in India and it was being spent, if the value of the factory is 12 million, mm -hmm. then we should just have borrowed 12 million. So does that mean that the difference between the 35 million, which the people of Ghana are going to have to pay for, and the true value of the factory, that one is balance that the people of India will give back to us or what? Okay, grateful. All right. Come in. So uh, he says he's not sure whether it is for sale. Uh, the minority there is saying that it's a ripoff. And he's talking about the fact that uh, there's need to even look at the cost of the factory, 12 million. That's the audit uh, report instead of 35 million dollars. You know, I don't even want to go into the um, arguments over who took the money and how the money was used in setting up the factory. I want us to look at this as patriots, right? I really feel sick to the stomach when we do this to ourselves and future generations, right? There are many hospitals that the previous government constructed and handed over to this current government that have been abandoned and taken over by weeds, right? If you go to value those hospitals today, you may not get the same value that was used in building those hospitals. Now, who is the loser? If those hospitals were put to good use, maybe those hospitals would have been generating revenue to build more hospitals in future and saving lives. Right. The secondary schools that were built, the e-blocks, some of them have been abandoned and taken over by weeds. I see Paris shaking his head. If, if, if they were, we, we see the videos in social media. You are saying not true. They're using several of the schools. Yes, some of them are being used, but many of them are still abandoned. No, you know, and I'm saying if you, if, you, if you go to value those that have been abandoned today, definitely it will depreciate. And it has depreciated not because the value that was used in putting it up is wrong, but it's because you, the one who has put it up, decided not to begin to take benefits from it. And so you cannot you know, quantify that benefit to match up after four years. And I'm not saying that is the case when it comes to uh, the, factory? the factory yet. I'm not saying the, the price may be as a result of, of the, the depreciation. In That's the not what I'm saying. I'm just talking about how, as a country, we, we allow very noble projects that can contribute to the growth 
of this country and take care of future generations just go to waste simply on the basis of very ugly politics. Look, I watched a documentary recently on CNN about the Avey Mirai's project. Right, you will weep. You will weep when you watch that document because I was, I was like, I couldn't imagine that as a people, we allowed the petty partisan politics to kill such a brilliant initiative when it was set up this was a farm even with helicopters and, and all the things, modern things that you see in other countries that are committed to agriculture. But on the basis of partisan, pa pa petty partisan politics and to score political points, instead of being corrective when a situation arises, we are destructive. We are so destructive. How? So... For example, if there were one or two uh, T's that were not crossed or I's that were not dotted in the Aveime project, the focus is not on making sure that those T's and I's are fixed so that the people enjoy the full benefits of that project. The focus is on destroying it to make a political point. What is that? Who are we doing and why are we doing this to ourselves? And that is the same thing with the Commander Sugar Factory. Said, this was a factory. To bring in the private investors. Is that, is that right? This was a factory that was set up and test run done successfully. <laughs> what else do you need yeah, as evidence sugar. that indeed this was we, a good we, we, job? We saw, we, we saw the test run sugar. <laughs> the, there was test run done on TV right, stations, carried it live. And they, they carried the processes where they took the, the, the sugar cane, they, they washed it, they loaded it, and, and to the final pro, pro, pro products. And they showed the sugar. But you see, based on partisan party, po I mean, petty partisan politics, it was ridiculed and suggested that even the final product that we all saw on TV was bought from the market and packaged. But may I? And after yeah, three I years. Know. After three years in office, the government has allowed that project that was aimed at reducing importation of sugar, which has an impact on our, the performance of our city, to rot. Because if it is not rotten, we will not be getting the stories that we are getting today. Right. Uh, uh, I don't see any. You are in Parliament. There's, there's, there's a second tranche of that loan. Exactly. What is its status now? Be because, you see, this government is not interested in making sh because For them, they, I think that some of them feel that if they get the factory up and working, somebody is going to get the credit. So the mindset is that it shouldn't work. Just like the Aveime, no. just like so the, the University of Ghana Medical School, uh, I mean, so, a medical so, center. So the money is It shouldn't there. work. The money is there. Uh, it hasn't, I, I don't, I, I, I will have to check my records, but I don't know if it has been accessed. But yes, there was that you know, a uh, 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 facility available. And that is why it was called backward integration. And this is what is done, I mean, it is not new. It is done internationally. Mm. It is done internationally. But these people, based on petty partisan politics, made it seem like a ridiculous and intelligent, you know, uh, 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 program. But we have seen in other countries where the establishment of the factory leads to the production of you know, uh, the, 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 uh, 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 what do you call it? The, the increased production of raw material. Because you see, you identify the raw material, in this case, sugar cane, which is produced in the area already. And I think that the local farmers were those who even provided the sugar cane for the test run. So it's already being produced. Right. But you okay. see, Pass, we set I'll up the factory we'll, we'll take so that people, people who have maybe one acre farms or two acre farms, because that is what the markets can take. Will get motivated enough to even take loans from banks to increase the size of their farms because they know the market has now increased. And apart from even the local farmers, government as part of that program was also to take this second part of the you know, financing that you spoke about to 
build its own right. farms. Yeah. So if you Pass, came into let's, office, let's some comments and then if you came into office, office you, you, if you came you into office and you, and you had some forever. few, please, you went. No, I am in charge of the time. You see, if, if you have, if you have, if you come into office mm. and you even have some few problems with maybe the agreements could have been better, there's nothing wrong with reviewing it and making it better. Okay, but when you allow things to deteriorate to a point that you have to sell it for scrap. I'm grateful. I mean, you're not selling Alaji, this let, country. Let me get to Johnny. Johnny, come on once again. Let's take yeah, some right, comments before morning. Paris. Uh, we do uh, the let's rest. check out. So Tilapia is starting us off. He's asking a question. And you can tell, uh, it says, well, Juan Rose Rood, uh, hmm, behind the scenes in SMP. So we have a, a money bag with uh, dollars in there. And uh, the key question is, where is the lady? Where is Helen Juan? Yesterday, I understand that the judge in, in charge of the matter was very furious. And he had to get two people to... Uh, bail the gentleman who stood surety the for uh, Shawan. Won. Yeah, I think so. But it says hmm, behind the scenes in SMP, and uh, you can yeah, see the wave. trees. Mm -hmm. They've all been locked. Oh, precious rosewood been carried away. But let's get on to WhatsApp. WhatsApp starts us off. It says, uh, "Hi, Martin Amidu is totally confused. Hence, is careful in order not to drag this country in a state of commotion because the number of real corrupt cases in this present NPP government outweigh that of perception of corruption <laughs> under the past NDC <laughs> government. And on that note, if it should go ahead to prosecute perception of corruption in NDC government and leave the real ones in NPP government, hell will surely break loose because eyes are seriously watching Papa Bissu in Accra. Last time one I was says we need to exercise patience with the special prosecutor. This is because we have the belief that the office of the special prosecutor will work up the, to the expectation and, uh, of everybody and everybody will be satisfied. Good morning, TV3. If Nanado really is interested in fighting corruption, then he should stop clearing his appointees when there is an allegation against them. Running a government with family and friends alone is a corrupt act. Osman Burikasan in Tamale Mystic uh, in Sohamed Dwajiri says, in fact, I'm not surprised that Martin Amidu and the special prosecutor office are not performing because he made a lot of allegations against the former president John Mahama based on perception according to Martin Abidu himself and I know that out of frustration Martin Abidu will try to hunt non-existent uh, which is to please the president uh, that's what you're saying. Okay, Mike Lamini in the UK says, Martin Amidu last year stated categorically that he's not going to wait till 2020 elections before he starts prosecuting people who had used their office to dupe Ghana. So Martin Amidu showed expedite action in prosecuting the various cases he has brought to the public domain, especially the one involving JDM and the EO oil group. Martin Amidu should know that there is high expectation of Ghanaians uh, in seeing concrete action and fighting the corruption canker, which has has been an endemic uh, one in our society they, than mere words. So he should not fail the nation. And finally, as he's done line, why says the creation of the special prosecutor's office, in my view, is needless. In fact, it's a leopard that can't bite. Ghania's expectation regarding the office is now in the various stomach. Okay, uh, this Baumia Osafomafo government has failed woefully in fighting corruption. I thought the president was in charge, not Baumia. Uh, but one more time, Tilapia. It says illegal logging. Juan, where are you? you we're still looking for her. if you find her let's know so we can tell the courts senior bright i thank you very grateful much. johnny once again um pass please wrap up for us then well you see it is this story this uh for want of a better expression this cock and bull uh, story about a factory that we borrowed 35 million cities uh, and within just a couple of years is now valued at 12 million these are the things that get the people of Ghana wanting to see some expedited uh, investigation and prosecution mm -hmm. and possible convictions, and not anything that anybody in public office says. These are the things. And uh, this attempt to justify uh, what is happening with what I call the true preaching about what has been happening and running down, I, I can relate to some of those things but I do know that, for instance, the rice uh, farm that my brother so eloquently talks about, they have had eight years. This rice farm started in 2000, prior 2000, was litigated upon within the 2000 up until 2008. From 2000, eight years old. From 2008, for eight years. From 2008 from and 2016, the NDC was in power another eight long years. And so this lamentation after starts eight not... eight years of destruction. This, no, you still have to uh, say that. I'm, I'm after saying eight that. years of destruction, so that, the NDC came to power. I'm saying okay. that. I'm saying that. 
and, and those are your words, not my words. Oh, after eight years of no, destruction, of course, because words. after eight years, you allowed everything to rot, you allowed everything, you destroyed everything. You, and, uh, let's play by oh. your own rules. Yeah. So I'm saying that these lamentations do not solve our problems. Uh, what was the our NDC, problems? The N it, is, it is the resolve to confront the things. And that's what I'm saying that but it is that resolve the that, is, and that, that is, or it is that resolve that is informing mm. the attitude of this government to look at the Commander Sugar Factory. Even though clearly, in my view, major fraud was uh, uh, committed on the people of this country. At the Commander Sugar Factory. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, again, uh, the secondary schools that my brother speaks of. Let me inform him that several of those uh, secondary schools uh, have been improved and are being used. In mm. fact. Including uh, what we are, are there some that are completed. not being, are there some completed. That are not being there, there were some that were not even started. We okay. have started construction on them. Okay. Uh, less than 40 of those e blocks mm. were completed by the time we took over. So, several of them were at different stages of completion. We you came see? and completed them and we are using them. See, those right. those <laughs> that were those that were not even started and those that were left at foundation and so on and so forth. We are still working on them. Okay. So it cannot be true. The hospitals, admittedly. There has been some challenges in that regard. It is just because of the manner in which those jobs and those contracts were so conducted in the first place. For instance, if you go to Always one of the hospitals, yeah, because you didn't do the things in the right manner. If you go and to a hospital, a hospital we uh, did around the four under, years, and it takes you three area. years, and you are still not the able to connect it. Was still and that just the ministry of if you find something is, is, is he asking uh, Paz, is, no, is he I asking a legitimate ridiculous. question that what that you've taken too long to deal with we use four no, years no, to no, create no, it no, that no, you no, see no, a problem no, with it no, and for three no, years no, you can't no, fix no, the problem no 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 i'm asking you that is no, he asking a no he's not asking a legitimate question in fact he should bury his head in shame i'm saying to you that some of the hospitals that he spoke of we had to do an audit only to find out that they were under the ministry of roads and so you had to now wind back the hands of time the and properly the of roads. So, and uh, uh, you, you, you now you are, now you are surprised, right? No, now you are, I'm, I'm, I'm asking. I'm telling you. I'm asking. So how does that? 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 The Ministry of Health has and it takes three years to know. Well, right. I Ridiculous. think that you're asking the wrong questions. <laughs> Which questions? You should be asking how come the Ministry of Health was not even aware. I thought we were looking for solutions. But, 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 I, so Once before you get to that, that no, answer. before you get to that, mm. the people of Ghana must know the injustice and the rot that was visited on, on us. It would be unfair I, to leave I that question I thought you said the court should that. decide that. That what? That you don't that know that fundamentally that it's not the Ministry of Roads. It is not the Ministry of Roads. You don't think the court should decide that? But I'm saying to you that the Perhaps court you don't can think the court should decide that? Well, the court can decide criminality and punish people. Yes. But fair-minded, level-headed Ghanaians can come to conclusions by themselves. That when you are building a hospital, I hope I'll get uh, you're talking when about you are building a public a I have to wrap up because you are so, building so, so, a hospital. Sorry, I'm responding to you. you see, so, sorry. Sorry. so when you are building no, a hospital, I find, I find, I find some of this something so unintelligent that when, it will be, no, it will be, no, it will be no, unfair no, not well, to comment. Never mind. Uh, never mind. Never mind. Look, never mind. I'll give you the mind. I'll give you the never mind. The never mind. Never mind. Your intelligence. Never mind. 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 Never mind.